All right, let's kick off this XC showdown by talking about the brand new top secret Cervelo ZFS5. Cervelo may be more well known for their road and gravel bikes. In fact, they just won the Tour de France a couple weeks back, but they have recently started to dabble in the mountain bike world with a hardtail not too long ago, and now their first full suspension mountain bike. So how did they do their first time out? Stick around to find out. So let's cover a few basics of the brand new Cervelo. It comes in two different versions. They call them the 100 or the 120. Uh, 100 has 100 millimeters of front and rear travel. The 120 has 115 mil, 120 front. That's where it gets the 120. A little bit confusing if you ask me, but whatever. So the one we have today is the 120, the slightly longer travel, more trail version. It's probably not a secret, but the same parent company that owns Santa Cruz, also owns Cervelo. So that is probably why this bike looks a lot like the Santa Cruz Blur. Rest assured, it is not just a rebranded or rebadged Santa Cruz Blur. It is different, and we will get into what makes it different. So first of all, the Cervelo is the slackest bike in our entire group with a 66.7 degree head tube angle in my size extra large. The reach numbers are a little bit shorter, especially in the longer travel version, because basically by over forking it, you're shrinking the effective reach of the bike. So like all the other bikes in our XC Showdown, the Cervelo uses a flex stay instead of uh, an additional rear pivot, but that does not mean it behaves and acts and feels like all of the other flex day bikes in this test. In fact, it feels very unique. So let's get into how that bike feels out on the trail. So on the climbs, the first thing I noticed about the Cervelo is that the fit and feel are much more trail than they are XC. It fits a bit more like a comfortable trail bike than an ultra racy XC whip. Has a taller front end and a more relaxed riding position, especially when compared to bikes like the Giant Anthem. I appreciate the fit of this bike. It makes me feel at home. It still has plenty of front wheel weight and traction though. So even on the steepest climbs, I didn't find the front end wandering and lifting. For me, it finds that sweet spot between comfort and performance. For folks who do want that more traditional XC fit and feel, they'll probably be a little bit happier on the 100 mil version. It is quite a bit steeper and the stack height is significantly lower. The suspension on the Cervelo falls somewhere in the middle of the spectrum between efficient and active. It's active enough to smooth out some of the trail chatter and provide some rear wheel traction, but it's not as efficient as a bike like the Orbeo ETH. It doesn't have that ultra quick snappy acceleration feel that some of the other XC bikes have. I did struggle a little bit with rear wheel traction on this bike for whatever reason, especially on steeper, looser, chunkier climbs. And it is worth noting this bike has the most aggressive tire out of all the bikes I rode. It comes with a, a Maxxis Recon where all the others are a Recon Race or the Vittoria Sierra. Apart from, you know, a little bit of back wheel slip, the Cervelo actually handled technical climbs very, very well and I think it's the body position. It allowed for a ton of control and agility, and it made it really easy to navigate tight corners and rocky bits. So overall, the Cervelo climbs very well with a fit and feel a bit more like a trail bike than a traditional XC bike. The suspension is active enough to smooth out the trail and provide some traction without going so far that it becomes inefficient. So I would not have pictured a bike with the word Cervelo printed on the down tube being as aggressive and capable of a descender as this. It has the slackest geometry and the most aggressive build out of all of the bikes in our test. So kudos to Cervelo for thinking progressively with their first full suspension offering. The first thing I noticed on the descents about the Cervelo is how smooth and quiet the bike is. It is insanely quiet. So quiet, in fact, it almost threw me off a little bit. I could hear myself thinking, which is not great. Um, not only is the bike audibly quiet, but it also rides fairly quiet too. It smooths out the bumps and compressions very well. Although it wasn't the smoothest bike in our test for whatever reason, the blur did feel a little bit smoother, even though they have very similar leverage curves and geometry. Uh, it could boil down to the difference in actual suspension components, but the blur did feel a little bit smoother than the Cervelo. The Cervelo's geometry did an excellent job of keeping the bike stable through rough terrain and at high speeds. Slacker head tube angle gave me the confidence to hit some steeper lines and rockier trails without too much thought. And it probably is the most stable bike in our entire test, which would make sense considering it does have the longest wheelbase. That wheelbase comes from a slacker head tube angle as well as 
slightly longer chain stays than anything else in the test. So overall, the Cervelo ZFS5 descends with the best of them. It has that comfortable, confident trail bike feel. So who is the ZFS5 for? I like the Cervelo for folks who want an excellent climbing XC trail down country bike, but they do want that more trail fit and feel. Keep in mind, this is the 120 version. So that 100 version is going to be much racier for those looking to actually race XC competitively. So not to say the 120 is slow, it just offers a bit more comfort and control for the average rider who isn't set on racing full time. Folks who focus on fitness, long rides, and climbing performance will all enjoy the ZFS5. But the bonus here is that when the trail gets rough, the bike has your back with a fair amount of stability. It's not a trail bike, but it's about as close as you can get while still being in that XC category. So the bottom line and the award for the Cervelo ZFS5, it is the most versatile XC bike in our entire group. So that's gonna do it for the Cervelo. Make sure you subscribe so you do see the following videos and the final conclusion where we compare all the bikes. Thanks for sticking around. See you next time.